good morning, distinguished colleagues. And uh, I would like to tell you that we're starting our work. And right here, uh, we have this uh, warm audience. I mean, uh, well, warm people, kind people that think alike. Well, maybe you have different views, of course, but as we all know, when two lawyers meet, we encounter three opinions, but I believe that with all this variety, we are united by the fact that we are discussing uh, the ways of developing law in general, especially we are discussing the development of constitutional law and the institutions uh, related to constitutionalism. And uh, may I start our round table in this semi-round room, let's say. I am happy to uh, welcome our speakers and I am grateful to them for finding this opportunity to be present here, come here and address us. Okay, uh, so as uh, the facilitator, well, I could make a speech introductory speech, but I always recall uh, this Czech writer, uh, Karol Čapek, who said that, uh, well, there are many, many words that uh, they uh, have this uh, root uh, regarding the water. So you can say here uh, underwater, backwater, and speeches with a lot of water and uh, a lot of nothing. I'm not going to speak about nothing, but by the time when we're going to sum up our discussion, that's when I am going to talk and I am going to talk about the real deep roots of everything that's going on. It's great pleasure for me, greatest pleasure to give the floor to to give the floor to Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman of uh, uh, the uh, Italian Court, Alessandro Alessandro. So, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. President, uh, came from the country, which uh, is uh, uh, well. Uh, I believe that he feels really well in St. Petersburg atmosphere because I already had the chance to tell Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, uh, that a lot of St. Petersburg was constructed under the supervision of his compatriots. It's not just the former uh, general headquarters, but also the constitutional court building. I do hope that Mr. Chairman will find the opportunity to visit us. <coughs> and. Uh, everything uh, uh, nice that was started by the Italians here in, by, in the 18th, 19th century. And I believe that this wonderful Italian-inspired architecture is going to inspire us to be together on the way of looking for this highly important and necessary phenomenon, which we call constitutionalism. Mr. President, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, and uh, uh, with all my heart, I welcome all the people present here, and I would like to emphasize high uh, great importance of this forum, and we exchange uh, our experience, and we stimulate the ideas regarding very complicated matters. Uh, we know for a long time that uh, constant changes of social economic fabric
fabric of the country are reflected in different parts of law that urge us uh, to get the answers to the new questions, new challenges in the so-called global society. Uh, we cannot deny the fact uh, that in the latest decade, lots of factors changed traditional systems uh, of organization of life of national and supranational communities technology development, uh, high-speed communications, high-speed transportation, you can have access uh, to any volume of information using the Internet. It all shows that the humanity is encountering such problems that we couldn't even imagine in the ne nearest past and interpersonal relations don't depend on distances any longer. Now a lot of people uh, actually negotiated lots of obstacles. Now we can find virtual platforms where it's possible to have contacts and interactive communications of any type. In the modern world, with the economic system where the markets of uh, manufacturing and uh, all so consumption are uh, actually in uh, communication all the time. Law, uh, as it was presented by Carl Schmitt, is not really connected uh, with the earth. It's uh, not uh, existing in the uh, space where g uh, different communities live. Now, law is dealing with very vast vast groups of the populations uh, w with the relations intertwined in space. There are more contacts uh, among cultures and traditions. And now we have communications, we have interaction, N uh, new models emerge. We are uh, the witnesses uh, of uh, the uh, dissemination of different cultural models in the world uh, which led towards new legal norms and fundamental rights, but also we are going to see traditional legal institutions evolving much faster, such as civil liability, uh, also property and marriage. Uh, and now we have this necessity of looking for common instruments to outline solutions for the problems that the government cannot solve alone because of uh, 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 such phenomena as migration of people or internet-related crimes. The law as an intrinsic element of the life cannot uh, ignore the process of globalization because there is the space and different subjects encounter different legal systems and the presence in the same space of several legal systems uh, provided conditions for serious changes of the roles of lawyers that have to take into consideration the fact of existence of national and supranational law. <laughs> Having great interaction between different social cultures may be more problematic. Uh, and uh, uh, now, when we're thinking about the role and functions of the law, that's highly topical. And uh, we have to draw the attention of the government to the fact that it has to take a very clear position regarding the level of political and legislative interference in uh, uh, society relations. Uh, but these ideas are not new. Uh, they bring us back to Plato's uh, uh, laws uh, when uh, in Athens they said if we must have perfect system in our country we must uh, have such an institution that would create the goal that we discuss would understand the political goal and secondly how could we reach that goal 
what kind of laws could we have? What kind of people are going to be there? If the government doesn't have it, uh, uh, that means that uh, the government is going to act at random. And in this case, uh, when we look at the traditional division between a classic and liberal model, we have to establish whether legal systems protect fundamental rights uh, uh, when there are not so strict rules to conduct such activities of individuals, or should they, uh, leaving their neutral positions, interfere into the relationship of uh, private uh, order and uh, maybe uh should they micromanage uh, uh, no matter what kind of model we take as uh, the pillar model the phenomenon of social transformation provides for the choice of legislative policy which is going to be the most suitable taking uh, into consideration this uh, last aspect we must emphasize that in taxes in environment protection, in energy field, we uh, have uh, uh, the examples of best practices that are quite attractive because of so-called positive sanctions. As it was noted in the literature, in uh, classic liberal constitutions, the main function of the state uh, is to to protect or guarantee, but not just that. Actually, we're dealing with a promotional function, function of uh, support. And in Italian constitution, we have two of these models, uh, along with the protection uh, provided by Article 2, the Republic guarantees human rights, but also the Republic has to promote certain issues. For example, Part 2 of uh, Article 3 establishes that the task of the Republic is to get rid of the obstacles of economic economic and social nature that interfere with the development of human personality and efficient participation in political and social organization in the country. Article 4, Part 1, is also highly important. The Republic recognizes uh, the right uh, of labor uh, and its real right. And the Republic is uh, united, uh, but it recognizes local autonomies and helps the development of those uh, uh, autonomies uh, and also uh, uh, the constitution supports research and Italy rejects war as infringement of freedoms of other peoples and uh, Italy agrees uh, that uh, uh, in the conditions of reciprocity Italy can uh, limit its sovereignty uh, when uh, the more equitable system could be emerged and helps international organizations. Uh, when we provide these constitutional provisions, we must emphasize that in the Italian uh, legal system, like in other post-liberal states, uh, it's possible uh, to choose uh, 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 proactive uh, and uh, promotional provisions, promotional uh, uh, promotional provisions uh, uh, help uh, to achieve necessary ch uh, changes. Uh, and when we determine the political goal that we put forward, we have to take into consideration the circumstances that in the time of changes, the law is not something final, but uh, the provisions become framework provisions that can carry different uh, content and could be adapted to the context and they provide freedom and space for creativity for legal players and that's why it's necessary uh, to outline the goals and also 
uh, we could make an attempt to establish common values uh, uh, with a diversity of different cultures. We should guarantee the broadest participation in the discussion regarding a definition of common values. Uh, first of all, it's respect. Uh, of uh, multiple factors uh, and we have to play the game fairly we have to guarantee the rights of minorities we have to pay special attention to procedures and uh, we have to uh, provide uh, the comparison of different approaches and we must guarantee the provisions when natural uh, uh, political rivalry happens uh, in the situation when transparency would exclude uh, a, um, any uh, form of uh, arbitrary rule. But we must take into consideration rights and liberties of the personality as uh, basic values. And uh, we can be talking also about supranational level. And if it's fair that the rules of the game regarding political rights, the right to create parties, to conduct free and fair elections, uh, uh, in this case, it's true that uh, we have the line of logical uh, connection that uh, connects all the rights and we don't have any violation of the rights that wouldn't f infringe on other rights uh, and when we are looking at the procedural rules uh, it's in different it's in different uh, actually uh, dimension and it's necessary to touch upon uh, the issue of existence of certain space decisions are no longer made once and forever but when we look at differences when we outline the criteria when we follow the conditions of social and cultural pluralism it leads towards compromise decisions and the task of the law is to provide uh, for the channel of development of the project of coexistence. We must understand this world is a historic world. It's an evolving world. And we have to put an emphasis on a different part of the problem. We have to work with a dialogue and the legal analysis cannot be without knowledge. And when we understand uh, the consequences, when we understand the problem, we must uh, know uh, the uh, science, ethics, and anthropology. And uh, it's uh, connected uh, with the digression from the principles uh, of uh, uh, legitimately, rationally acting state that delegated the powers to clearly um, defined subjects, but global law is distinguished by co-authorship, which is such that along with the subjects who officially have to outline legal norms, you encounter other authors, including individuals who participate in the establishing of national and transnational uh, legal system, but also it's Lex Mercatoria and Italian uh, uh, law enforcement practice actually recognized Lex Mercatoria long ago and also uh, the laws of shopping and all the phenomena uh, that uh, It's quite clear that internet development led to a new economic relations. Uh, the laws are substituted by uh, private tools as the means to be used flexibly, quickly, and informally. It's not by chance that uh, we have uh, contract law and uh, it's now uh, 
are overlapping with certain statutes and it all influences traditional approach to creation of legal rules. Uh, uh, so this way we're changing the identity of the lawyer because the lawyer has to act in the framework of the legal system. And the Constitutional Court uh, of uh, Italy, well, uh, it uh, believes uh, that uh, the law uh, reflects the life of the society. And the Constitutional Court changed uh, certain approaches and certain uh, provisions. And the law becomes uh, sometimes inadequate. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in 1956, uh, by decision number six, the court stated that uh, the directives of uh, uh, general directives uh, uh, could be taken out of the system of connections, out of uh, internal rationality of the provisions that participate uh, in the creation of the fabric of existing legal system. And uh, uh, in, uh, at the time of globalization, uh, well, it's uh, uh, treated uh, with special seriousness. Uh, Maybe uh, it's possible to divide something that's part of the law uh, from uh, something that's not the law. It's quite relative. Uh, the uh, government has the monopoly and its institutionalization of the canon, but uh, institutionalization uh, which is following determination of the subject uh, uh, today uh, uh, everything is being uh, intensified, uh, overlapping of the law and social life. That's why it's necessary for the lawyers to have more dynamic dialogue and exchange of views with other experts, which is going to lead towards introduction of more complicated system of law, which is going to reflect the special cultural features. Uh, the law is going to be uh, more capable of reflecting the facts of life, but more serious participation if it's broadening democracy we would have to take into consideration two types of consequences. <clears throat> On the one hand, it's the risk uh, which is coming from uh, establishing uh, generalizing models uh, that uh, represent the community of the equals. On the other hand, that strengthening of potential instability of the system uh, that happens, uh, well, now I am outside uh, my time limits. I'm going to thank all of you, and uh, I would like to thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do hope that uh, uh, my presentation is going to be published later. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, Chris Collo. And uh, uh, once again, we learned that Italians live under such wonderful sun, and they are really quick. They react to the situation very quickly. People in the north are less flexible, and uh, you do it press the tempo, right? And because uh, Mr. President had to uh, finish his presentation because he believed believe that uh, his time was up. We must thank him, not just for that, but uh, for providing this highly substantive, uh, substantive description of the modern uh, development of constitutional rights and liberties and constitutionalism in his country. Thank you so much, Mr. President. And And now, now I have this opportunity to give the floor and to ask uh, 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 the, uh, Mr. Chairman of the Constitutional uh, 
uh, Council of uh, the Kingdom of Morocco, Mr. Mohamed Ashargi. Uh, he is also uh, the chairman of the constitutional uh, control uh, body of uh, Francophone states. And I uh, hear this word, uh, Mohammed. I can speak about St. Petersburg, starting with the times of Catherine the Second, Catherine the Great. Uh, they tried to find some model in Russia to provide for the opportunity uh, for different ethnic groups to live uh, here. And I believe that this. Uh, policy of equal conditions for people uh, uh, from different religious backgrounds. Well, I believe that we must value this kind of policy also in modern conditions uh, when uh, these multiple, multiple religious, uh, multiple religious groups encountered this issue. And I would like to draw the attention of Mr. Mohammed that at the time of Catherine the Great and uh, for a long time after that, the mosque in St. Petersburg was the largest mosque in Russia, the largest mosque. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, you have the floor. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Minister of Justice, who sent me the invitation to participate in this forum. And this is uh, some kind of uh, uh, legal divorce. And uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, the facilitator, for the work, great uh, work uh, which is uh, conducted in interpretation of the Russian Constitution and uh, also uh, for the work regarding human rights in the Russian Federation. Regarding constitutionalism today, I would like to touch upon one highly important aspect. This is the aspect of uh, globalization, internationalization of modern constitutionalism. This phenomenon was studied uh, many times, and we started serious studies uh, in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, a lawyer from uh, Russia, Boris Yurkin, and also a lot of lawyers from France studied these processes. Uh, these uh, processes were determined by the process of globalization and international exchanges. Uh, so that's uh, establishing contacts, uh, exchanges, joint discussions uh, uh, among different countries that exist uh, 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 and I would like to underline that today we have at least uh, 10 associations, uh, national, regional associations that work in this field, in the field of constitutionalism. and. Uh, <coughs> and uh, constitutionalist uh, uh, association in Europe, in Arab countries, in America, and so on. That's the first factor. Uh, is such that the very notion of constitution is changing, is evolving. And before the constitution uh, was about uh, the government, uh, the state power. And also, uh, we had the Constitution, which was interested in the rights and liberties, uh, human rights and liberties. Uh, and since that time, changing of the notion constitution was accompanied by uh, the development of the very notion of constitutionalism and uh, uh, providing for the rights in the field of constitutionalism, uh, which uh, uh, should provide for uh, the uh, rule of law, also control law enforcement practices. 
and also to be open uh, to the citizen. And today, uh, practically everywhere, the constitutions are like this. That means that the citizen has the right to uh, address the constitution in order to protect rights and liberties. I believe that this change in the notion of constitution is highly important. Another factor is in the influence of international law on constitutional law. Such influence could be made at two levels. First of all, all of us, we are the witnesses of the implementation of the constitutional rights and freedoms which infringed which are stated in uh, different uh, legal documents like uh, civil pacts, uh, international covenants or conventions, Convention of uh, 1966, Covenant on Protection of Rights of Women and Children, and there's a huge list of such conventions and legal documents, but even at the international level we see, we observe the dissemination and the spread of a number of conventions uh, to protect human rights, uh, be it in Europe or in other countries at large, in the world at large, in the Arab uh, world, in Asia, and so on and so forth. So now we are talking about the spread and increase in number of uh, legal acts which belongs to the uh, human rights domain and which are supplemented uh, by the constitutions of uh, various countries. Such norms are reflected in uh, the normative uh, documents, acts and constitutions. The second tier or level, as I mentioned before, is the hierarchy of uh, various uh, types of legal norms. We are talking about the place and role of international law uh, on human rights in uh, the hierarchy of the uh, legal norms. And the same, uh, what kind of relations do can we observe between these rights and other rights? from different domains. If you look at the norms of uh, these norms, uh, jurisdiction of the international law in other uh, areas, we can see three main trends emerging in relations between the international law and uh, constitutional law. So, these are the following. First trend is that international laws on protection of uh, human rights should apply to the supranational national supranational uh, interests. As far as I know, there is no constitution which would directly says that international treaties and agreements uh, can prevail over the national constitution. But we have a constitution in the Latin countries like uh, Costa Rica or Bolivia, where we see that in case the international treaty or agreement provides uh, citizens with uh, protection or of uh, their rights which uh, would prevail as compared to r the rights or the level of protection provided by the domestic legislation, then this uh, international law would uh, prevail. This is uh, one of the issues or relationship between the international law and constitutional law. Besides these two examples, uh, other examples, there are no 
other conventions which would have uh, prevailing force or power as compared to the domestic constitutions. The second part or the second tier is that international uh, law laws are acquiring a supranational or start uh, playing a supranational role, but this uh, role is uh, lower as compared with the role of the constitutions. This applies to the majority of the European countries like Czech Republic, France, Italy and other countries. And in France, constitution of the Fifth Republic says that on the day of its publication, the uh, treaty or agreement has the prevailing force with respect to other laws, domestic laws, but not with respect to the Constitution. The same situation is observed or can be observed in uh, the countries uh, of the African continent. Regarding the recent constitutions of the Arab countries, uh, Libya and Tunisia, we can see that they are going the same way. The Constitution of Tunisia, Article 20 of this constitution, says that conventions that have been ratified by the people of uh, Tunisia have a prevailing force. And the same trends would be observed in the future in the countries uh, of Central America like uh, Panama, Paraguay and other countries. This supranational initiatives are expected to be adopted in the future and we need to look to take a careful look uh, towards this as far as the constitutional court of the Russian Federation is concerned I would like to say that this is uh, the the same story according to the article 15 of the constitution of the russian federation conventions or treaties are the integral part of the legal system in case if other international legal norms are applicable to such of those uh, legislative acts and uh, the international uh, legislation has a prevailing uh, force. The third element is uh, the cases when the constitution is not so clear in terms of explaining the position or the status of the international treaties and agreements in uh, the legal system. But such countries uh, always refer to the international law which provides for the human rights or freedoms uh, mentioned in international laws or treaties. They use the norms of uh, human uh, rights laws so that to interpret by their own means the constitution of their country. This is the case with Peru. Their constitution doesn't mention the role of the international treaties in the system of, in the constitutional system, and the same can be applied to other countries like Greece. But these countries use the definition of uh, human rights in their legal practice. Let me dwell briefly on the uh, Constitution of uh, Morocco. The latest edition of 2011 of this Constitution use a dual system. 
first of all in the framework or under the constitution of Morocco the supremacy of international conventions and other norms of international law are recognized as prevailing uh, over the domestic legislation. The legislation of Morocco is the prerequisite of the harmonization of the international law and conventions and treaties uh, ratified by its uh, state. And in parallel, Constitution of Morocco also stipulates the fact that the treaties that could contradict uh, con Constitution cannot be ratified or implemented. If there is a doubt whether this uh, legislation is in compliance with the norms of Constitution, and if Constitutional Court decides that this legislation in question does not correspond uh, to the Constitution, uh, the state cannot ratify this law. But if the state believes that this treaty is uh, of uh, great importance uh, for ensuring uh, the constitutional uh, law, then we can uh, change the constitution. So by doing so, we can ensure the implementation of the constitutional system. The second technique which was used is that the new constitution of 2011 was incorporated into the previous constitutions which provides for the human rights and freedoms known at the international level. I wouldn't like to dwell specifically on that. I just would like to mention that the constitution of Morocco has four generations of human rights. First generation, economic one, political, civil. Second, economic, political and social. The third generation applies to to the protection of uh, environment of future gen generation and the fourth generation as I mentioned as I call it uh, even it's very hard to talk about this because there are no clear definition at the international level of uh, such uh, classification but still I would like to say that with respect to the fourth generation, I'm referring uh, to the rights which are given to human beings uh, in uh, the uh, education and internet domain. The chair of uh, today's round table mentioned that we are living in the open society where exchange of information is intensifying from day to day and it shouldn't uh, infringe upon uh, the human rights. We see the interference with, uh, of this information with the human rights or private life. And this dictates that we need uh, to work out at the international level and in domestic legislation the system of the protection of human rights in the modern information society. And by doing so, the Moroccan uh, constitution has incorporated all four definitions, four generations of uh, definitions of the uh, human rights. So the Chair, the President of the Constitutional Court yesterday said about the application of the Constitution in terms of uh, criminal proceedings. The Constitution of Morocco incorporated into the text the crimes which are the competence of the international human rights uh, courts. Uh, crimes uh, against humanity, genocide, all of these uh, crimes are listed in the Constitution of Morocco. They are punishable by the domestic legislation. If tomorrow, suddenly, 
we will see about the crimes against uh, humanity or genocide in the territory of Morocco. That's precisely the Moroccan legislation uh, would be dealing with these crimes, and they would be uh, subject to the domestic legislation. So we incorporated uh, into the uh, Constitution of Morocco the provisions uh, related uh, to the competence of the international criminal uh, tribunal tribunals. And in conclusion of my intervention, I would like to stress uh, on uh, two aspects. First relates to the fact that now we witness in internationalization or globalization of the constitutional law. So the borders between the various uh, types of uh, law are going to cease to exist. And, uh, in the human rights, especially at the international law or at the level of the domestic law. So having the common objective, uh, which is in uh, promotion and protection of uh, human rights, this uh, legal system would emerge even further and would be combining, because the, the task is uh, they need to protect human rights. Um, uh, and the second element which I would like to say that despite all uh, changes which we witness today and the abundance of the jurisdictions and abundance of uh, various uh, legal systems, their interaction with the supranational uh, systems. Still we see uh, huge uh, challenges and problems. Sometimes we see the situation when uh, lawyers or judges of the constitutional uh, courts are obliged to find the crea creativity processes in order to find the processes between the constitutional law and domestic law. Of course, we need to ensure the convergence between uh, the uh, international law once it, it is ratified by the national parliaments, like Geneva uh, Convention on the uh, Implementation of uh, Laws. We cannot uh, use domestic uh, legislation so that to justify the lack of implementation of international obligations. We need to ensure the uh, uh, the level or balance between the constitutional law or international law. Sometimes it's very difficult and I know that the con Constitutional Court of Italy who are present uh, uh, here can confirm this. We're trying to find some kind of solution, and we believe that international law is subject to constitutions, and in, uh, they should be in compliance with the constitutional laws. But the violation of these international laws is the violation at the same time of the constitutional law, and sometimes we and sometimes we are talking about very grave violations. We should. Uh, find some creativity in maintaining balance between uh, the constitutional law and international law. I would like to thank you for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. In the European region and constitutional courts uh, and constitutional system has been developing for quite a long time. Here we have the director of the law and public policy, Madam Sidorovic. 
she was the founder of this movement in order to integrate these processes starting from the process in Moscow in 2005 uh, with the participation of Venice Convention uh, Commission and constitutional courts of the European countries. This process continues to develop and this process is uh, very important. And dear colleagues, I would like to draw your attention that we have uh, two more uh, chairs of Constitutional Courts, Chair of the Constitutional Court of Kazakhstan, Mr. Rogov, and uh, Chair of the Constitutional Court of Republic of Belarus, Pyotr Pyotrovich Miklashevich. I would like to draw your attention uh, to the fact that uh, they moved closer to Russia through economy and they have a proper basis for reaction uh, in the framework of the Eurasian Economic Union and from the point of view of constitution they also should take into account such integrational processes. Dear colleagues, I would like to ask you who will lead, who will be the first? Mr. Mikolashevich, you have the floor. Uh, dear participants in the forum, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to say uh, some words about the impression of this forum. First of all, uh, it's quite symbolic from a historic point of view, the role of this forum. It is conducted in St. Petersburg, where 300 years ago uh, the birthplace was created of the drastic reforms of the Russian society, strengthening of the Russian statehood according to the civilized and European uh, manner. And this is what we feel today during this forum. Secondly, those topics that we are discussing uh, in the modern context, yes, indeed, in the end of uh, the previous uh, century, last uh, century, we uh, witnessed the uh, drastic transformation and accordingly countries of the post-Soviet Union space are now trying to strengthen their uh, statehoods on constitutional basis. Uh, Mr. Zorkin mentioned that processes taking place in uh, Russia and Belarus and Kazakhstan, they are triggered uh, by the fact that uh, we have been living uh, for many years in, in one country and we have some common legal sentiments to share. In my intervention, I would like briefly to tell you about the uh, development of the constitutionalism and role of the constitutional system in the Republic. The rule of law and application of the Constitution of Belarus, uh, establishment of constitutional legislation are the main prerequisites uh, for the constitu constitutionalism in Belarus as uh, the main element of the relations that are developed in the constitutional um, uh, domain. Constitutional system and relations are based on the uh, supremacy of rule of law and development of constitutional uh, values, uh, uh, legal practice uh, uh, where the states and its uh, bodies uh, and citizens should be guided uh, by the norms of the Constitution. At the same time, the development of Constitution and state is directed not only at the achievement of the abstract constitutional values, but also ensuring tangible and spiritual uh, needs of uh, human beings 
as the main subject of the constitutional rights and obligations. Formation of the democratic legal states and socially favorable state on the principles of equality and justice, real guarantees of rights and freedoms of human beings are the main objective of the constitutional social development and they are the guiding line for the development of the modern constitu constitutional system. And the context of globalization, we see the emergence of the international uh, relationship uh, and which sometimes has their own legal nature in terms of constitution. In the process of the building of the supranational constitutional system, first of all, in the European political and legal space, we're trying to work out common approaches to the solution of the constitutional problems and common methods of the interpretation and use of constitutional norms. On the other hand, we see the uh, trend to increase national uh, tradition and constitutional system. Such processes in the near future would be characterized and for the Eurasian uh, economic space. Formation of the constitutional uh, system based on the human rights, freedom, e equality and justice uh, is also the trend in the uh, Belarus uh, statehood. While developing the Constitution of uh, Republic of Belarus, uh, adopted in 1994 as a sovereign independent state, we use the constitutional doctrines of the leading European countries and the world experience. That allowed to take into account the objective factors of the transitional period and to determine the constitutional objectives of the development of society. Constitution has enshrined uh, norms uh, of the division of the powers and other democratic uh, uh, values. The basis of the constitutional system is uh, the following. First of all, uh, a person, its uh, freedom and rights according to the Article 2 of the Constitution, a person, its uh, right, freedom and guarantees of the implementation are the supreme value of the society and the state. At the same time, uh, there is a dual responsibility. State the state is responsible uh, to ensure these freedoms and uh, values, and a citizen is responsible before the state for the implementation and compliance with uh, his obligations in uh, the Constitution. Such constitutional provisions uh, uh, influence on uh, the, poli uh, the policy of the uh, state. At the same time, it is guaranteed to ensure the uh, freedoms and uh, rights of uh, all citizens in the protection economic protection and social protection of the citizens. Secondly, according to the Article 3 of the Constitution of Belarus, the uh, sole uh, source of the state power is the people of Belarus, which uh, execute its uh, power uh, through the uh, representative uh, bodies. This principle is enshrined in Constitution and uh, and implements this uh, principle which ensures the sustainable effective development of the state without any revolution or social turmoils. Thirdly, the principle of division of uh, powers. It, this is rela it closely related to the constitutional principle of uh, the uh, power of the people and it is based in the Constitution uh, 1994, but it was very hard to implement in practice uh, since uh, the powers of every branch of uh, powers were not clearly defined. 
and uh, balance. We find a solution in terms of uh, the conduct of uh, referendum in 1996 on the basis of which we introduced changes into constitution and now we have a clear definition of the powers and we have uh, effective uh, legal uh, mechanism of interaction between different uh, authorities. Currently we can state that the powerful presidential uh, power has provided a possibility to develop, to ensure sustainable and gradual development of the people. Fourthly, the rule of law. In uh, Belarus, we have the principle of the rule of law. Uh, the state, its bodies, and all officials should be acting in uh, the according to the constitution and other normative acts. Constitution of uh, Belarus not only strengthens the principles and norms, but also determines uh, the ways how the development should be developing in the long run as a democratic, social, and uh, legally legal states. This potential of this transformation is implemented through the implementation of the constitutional provisions, uh, norms of the legal acts, while uh, ensuring uh, the implementation of constitution in the modern e times. This allows uh, the citizens and officials to take the main law of our state, not as the combination of legal norms and principles having the supreme legal force, but also as a real and effective social uh, treaty on the basis of which we can reach the uh, public uh, cons uh, agreement and the trust to the state. Fifthly, sovereignty. Currently, in the process of globalization and integration, the issues of uh, the content uh, limits of the Constitution require new approaches as, as the integral part of the constitutional doctrine of the specific state and the most important uh, area of development of the constitutional system. Uh, the Republic of uh, Belarus uh, is a member of uh, intergovernment uh, uh, groups and international groups, and uh, uh, it's uh, relying on its own constitution, the values and goals of the revolution. Uh, the uh, Belarus is a member of the Eurasian Economic Union, and here we take into consideration uh, the correlation between national and supranational legislation and unification of legal and economic tools. Uh, Republic of Belarus is open to international legal integration. Part of sovereign powers of the Republic of Belarus could be given to supranational groups. At the same time, we uh, should remember about the role of the Constitution. And we cannot limit the sovereign right of the people of Belarus to independently determine the way of development and uh, to change uh, and also you cannot infringe constitutional rights and liberties of the citizens. Uh, constitutional control and the development of constitutionalism. Well, the direct application of uh, constitution, rule of law state, well, constitutional courts are highly important for that. Uh, their uh, rulings are highly important for the development of the government and the society. Uh, the uh, constitutional control bodies become mediators of society relations in the course of implementation of main uh, value messages of the constitutions uh, in creation of new laws and law enforcement. This trend helps to create conditions for sustainable development of the society and the state uh, taking constitutional path. In the Republic of Belarus, in the course of 20 years, certain legal mechanisms were created for systemic constitutional control of the laws and other provisions. Belarus' model of constitutional control uh, is special because of preliminary and uh, 
later control. The preliminary control of the constitutionality of the laws is uh, the main direction of the activity of the Constitutional Court. Uh, uh, the uh, rulings of the Constitutional Court provide uh, for uh, the comprehensive uh, influence at society relations uh, and a lot depends on the practical following of constitutional principles. The mechanism of implementation of rights and liberties of the people, uh, the decisions of the Constitutional Court support constitutional values uh, and maintain the constitutional uh, balance. We can say that constitutional court, on the one hand, uh, confirms that the laws are constitutional, and the lawmakers, uh, they are uh, actually uh, supported in uh, their uh, constitutional work and uh, in the enforcement of the laws, it's impossible to distort the sense of the Constitution. It's mandatory preliminary control, which shows that it's highly important for the dynamic legal regulations of the society relations. In uh, annual uh, in annual messages to the president and the parliament, uh, uh, the constitutional court, on the basis of all the cases, uh, is actually outlining the uh, practical implementation of the protection of constitutional values. It's always emphasized that constitutional legality, as a very important part of constitutionalism, must be supported by all the uh, government bodies, citizens, and civil society institutions. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you all for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, uh, 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 distinguished uh, Petr Petrovich. Uh, well, you emphasized uh, that, uh, yes, we have lots of uh, things in common regarding constitutionalism, and also you emphasized special features of the constitutional system of Belarus, and you also emphasized that uh, the main goal was to help citizens and also help peaceful uh, non-revolutionary development of the society. Thank you so much. And now I will try to make my comments short. I'm not really making any comments. Uh, and please, speakers, take into consideration that at noon sharp we must stop, because work is work, but lunch should be on time. And uh, now, uh, Igor uh, uh, Rogov, uh, Chairman of the Constitutional Council of Kazakhstan. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to use this opportunity and uh, express my gratitude uh, for the invitation to this forum. I am really impressed, and this is the first time that I participate in the work of this uh, great legal event. And if I may, uh, I would like to uh, change the format of my presentation because, frankly, I was getting ready, and I was ready to discuss theories. Uh, but uh, when you are doing it in the second half of the forum, I can say that I agree with most of the provisions, and I can just limit my speech to the comments uh, using uh, the practice of constitutional work in our country. Uh, and all the presentations yesterday, the day before yesterday, today, uh, touched upon uh, the fact that it's not that easy to live in the time of changes. But without changes, it's so boring. And our countries live in the time of changes for more than 20 years, and the changes could be different. I would like to illustrate uh, the idea that I expressed yesterday, uh, and Valery uh, Dmitrievich uh, also expressed the ideas yesterday. This mixture of stability, 
and conservative approach of constitutional provisions. Uh, well, but it's necessary to uh, make them better. Uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, this constitution was the second uh, uh, constitution at the time of independence, and a number of provisions uh, were there that uh, were uh, reacting at Soviet post. Uh, for example, uh, government funding of uh, NGOs was not allowed, just in case. Also, uh, uh, it was uh, not allowed for government and uh, uh, also non-government institutions to merge. And when yesterday uh, Mr. Shohin expressed his gratitude to Kazakhstan about the special role of Kazakhstan, protection of entrepreneurs, but that was possible only after 2007, when the amendments were introduced that lifted uh, certain bans. Uh, today, our uh, country Uh, because of the challenges uh, existing in the world, in Eurasian space, in particular in Kazakhstan, and uh, uh, our country is reacting by way of creating special program of modernization of Kazakh community and Kazakhstan state. That was uh, uh, the goal set by uh, uh, President Nursultan Nazarbayev. And he uh, put it, uh, put those goals uh, uh, in the uh, at the Congress of Nuratan Party. And yesterday it was mentioned by the Minister of Justice, uh, Mr. Imashev. But I would like to remind you and show you how it's connected with constitutional issues. Number one, that modern professional autonomous uh, government stuff, state stuff. It's a lot of work, and we've been improving our uh, civil service for many years. Uh, well, uh, it's impossible to be perfect. You can always uh, improve the system. But now we are thinking about the uh, creation of the special case, if you want, uh, of the uh, government officials. Uh, when the civil service is going to be a career service, uh, it's not allowed uh, uh, to use family connections, to give bribes, receive bribes. Uh, but there is one special feature. Foreigners could be hired for civil service in Kazakhstan. But this tiny detail, it uh, requires a special constitutional amendment. Because today, only citizens of Kazakhstan can be civil servants. Uh, secondly, uh, rule of law. Number three, uh, industrialization and economic growth uh, based on uh, diversification. Number four, uh, single future nation. Number five, transparent and responsible state. And those changes are going to happen rapidly. And the president, right after inauguration, created National Modernization Committee, a commission uh, with five working groups. And uh, also uh, representatives of the Constitutional Council participate, not judges or uh, justices of the Constitutional Court, but we have Constitutional Council. They ask me, I say, well, uh, we are not court, we are not co we are council. They ask me, why is it a council? I believe, and with great pleasure, I welcomed my colleague from Morocco. Maybe that's uh, because of subjective approach. Uh, in the expert council, which was uh, created uh, at the president, we had foreigners, uh, a person from Russia, Mr. Alexeyev, uh, and two people from uh, France, Roland Dumas, uh, so uh, former uh, President and Jacques Attali, and the people, uh, well, for the French people were more influential, and we have Constitutional Council. And if you're interested, I can tell you, well, we don't differ that much from Constitutional Court. Uh, well, we're not looking at individual uh, complaints. 
and the Constitutional uh, Council members are also members of those working groups, and we do work also. The President said right away, because uh, he is planning uh, redistribution of uh, uh, the powers, uh, so the delegation from the President to the Parliament and the Cabinet taking into consideration national traditions. So it's not clear what is the volume, uh, what is uh, the nature of this delegation. Everything is going to be viewed by the working groups, but at least that's what we're working with. And the president uh, announced this national idea. Nengelikiel is the Kazakh name. It's very difficult to translate. If you just translate it, it means eternal country, country forever. In Kazakh language, uh, it's sacred. something which is uh, eternal, and at the same time uh, it's the, one of the pillars, but it corresponds really well with the preliminary part of the Constitution and also with the principle which is reflected in the Constitution of Kazakhstan. This is the principle of Kazakhstan patriotism. I know it's not like this in the Russian Federation. It doesn't mean that Russians are not patriots, but here we have it uh, actually um, reflected in the Constitution. And Mengele Kel is going to be this main idea of the country forever. And we must say uh, 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 that uh, uh, having this principle in our Constitution uh, creates great interest also among your neighbors in Baltic countries who realize that uh, not just ethnic Kazakhs are patriots of Kazakhstan. Of course, Russia is not surprised. Uh, when you are a patriot of Russia, it doesn't mean you are an ethnic Russian. And the same in our country. If you visited Kazakhstan, if you met with the people, you'd agree that uh, ethnic origin is not important. But we have the presidential program of three languages. In the future, every Kazakh citizen must speak Kazakh freely, Russian freely, and English freely. So uh, Kazakhs must be fluent in Russian, English, and Kazakh. And uh, every week uh, I have two classes of Kazakh and two classes of English. Uh, uh, one hour after work. And the government money is used. And uh, we learn foreign languages. Our Ukrainian colleagues, they were impressed. But not, uh, they couldn't uh, really learn all our lessons, unfortunately. Well, uh, a judicial system. In the judicial system, uh, we're thinking about creation of uh, three instances. Now we have somewhat more. We have also supervisory. And then uh, we are planning to have International Financial Center in Astana, uh, having a, uh, and this center is going to enjoy a special status. We are going to have a special special tribunal, uh, similar to the tri tribunal in Dubai. Uh, they are going to hear uh, commercial disputes. Uh, with applicable English law, and also they're going to invite foreign judges. A lot of changes are going to happen uh, in uh, the law enforcement. Uh, now uh, criminal and criminal procedure codes are quite uh, different from <coughs> uh, other post-Soviet codes. Uh, the first codes uh, we just replicated from the Russian model, but now if you're interested, you could look at the text of our code, and we're creating the comprehensive strategy of social rehabilitation for former prison inmates. 
and all this work all this work is going to be conducted uh, really quickly naturally when we announced that the next year is going to be an anniversary year and we're going to uh, just celebrate 20 years of the Constitution, I thought it would be just a festive activity. And last year when I sent invitations uh, and uh, 30th of August, you're welcome. We, uh, now uh, this is going to be a real working uh, holiday, because it's not just a holiday. We are going to generate new ideas, and we are going to have a traditional conference uh, uh, during the Constitution Day, and uh, we uh, are talking about modernization of the Constitution, and I believe that our colleagues are going to think about it and help us with their advice. Uh, we uh, always received uh, a lot of assistance from the Venice Commission, uh, from Germany, from Great Britain, but especially from the Russian Federation. And uh, uh, Russian experts are often invited. And I believe that starting uh, next year, starting next year, we're going to have uniform mechanism of government procurement uh, in the Eurasian uh, Economic Union. And uh, uh, we are going to get uh, experts involved. Uh, government procurement is important, and we have 30 experts, uh, seven of them are members, uh, and that's why we need experts. And now everything is going to be uh, put on the websites, and uh, it's all chosen by the computer, and I believe that we're going to have great opportunities. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to receive information, and I am grateful for your assistance. And we hope to get some new assistance from you, and we expect you at our uh, event. Thank you for your attention. Uh, distinguished uh, Igor, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that you reminded us that uh, there is no constitution without patriotism. But patriotism is a notion understood differently by different people. But here in this audience, we should say that we should have constitutional patriotism. We should be patriots of our constitution. Thank you so much. Let's move forward. And uh, our dear foreign uh, colleagues, uh, now we make a transition to our guests from Russia. They are not guests of Russia, but they are just uh, guests of the forum. Uh, I would like to give the floor, if I may, uh, uh, to uh, our senator, uh, chairman of the Constitutional Legislation Committee of the Federation Council, Andrei Klishas. Distinguished Mr. Klishas, uh, distinguished uh, uh, Chairman Zorkin, uh, distinguished participants. Yes, I was also getting ready. I'm going to give you my full text, but if it so happens that I don't have enough time so that uh, uh, you provide full-scale uh, summing up of our session, uh, I won't be 100% satisfied. That's why I will be briefer than my speech. Uh, colleagues, we are in the course of reforming of different bodies of uh, power. Sometimes it touches upon the Constitution. We all know that. And, of course, quite often we hear the criticism. <coughs> Uh, we hear that uh, Constitution is, should be stable. Stability is the most important. Don't touch the Constitution. That's what we heard. 
but we and our colleagues in the State Duma understand that the Constitution is a live document, live document that must react at government uh, and society requests. And uh, we, from the point of view of the lawmakers, we could do much more to improve our, for example, local solve government bodies, but we follow the same principle. Yesterday, uh, we uh, discussed at the session conducted by Academician Khabriva, we discussed the issues uh, related to legislative work. And I would like to say what I said there. Our desire alone to change the laws and to improve it, our desire alone is not enough. We need clear, clear society a request for such changes. And this is the principle uh, we look at uh, in the Parliament. Secondly, may, maybe a serious drawback of our work is the fact that when we receive signals from the society, we don't put it clearly what kind of tasks we deal with when we change the laws. and. Uh, the latest municipal reform is a vivid example of that. And it goes without saying that here we don't discuss a ratio of abstract uh, things such as centralization, decentralization. But when we're talking about local self-governments and about the tasks, and here at the forum, I understand that we didn't uh, explain the tasks we tried to solve. <clears throat> First of all, we had to follow the provisions of the European Charter of Local Self-Government, but secondly, we had to use the real guarantees uh, for uh, local self-government bodies, constitutional guarantees. Uh, local bodies, although the Constitution says that they're not government per se, but this is uh, the public system. I believe that a lot of people paid attention, especially justices of the Constitutional Court present here, because uh, for two or three years the Parliament passed more uh, laws uh, to uh, enforce the rulings of the Constitutional Court. We have very constructive cooperation with the government and the Ministry of Justice. And I remember that our committee conducted the event where justices of the Constitutional Court were invited. And a lot of Constitutional Court rulings at that time were not uh, really enforced. Today, we have quite a different situation. The rulings are being enforced. We take into consideration legal opinions of the Constitutional Court. And I believe that we need these platforms. Uh, we have to meet uh, with the uh, public. We me need meetings with the students. A youth Forum was a very interesting event because very important. When I meet with my uh, 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 just uh, uh, district that voted for me. They ask me questions about municipal filters, for example. And I realized that that was a big mistake because when we called it a filter, actually we uh, lost we lost the very reason for having that provision because our goal was uh, <coughs> Our goal was not to create filters. And you can have a look at the elections. You could see that it didn't work as filters, but we stimulated the political parties and parliamentary parties uh, to go to the elections, starting with the local self-government, in order to gather those uh, signatures. That was the goal. And uh, 
I was talking about the organization of the bodies of public power, and this is a highly important task we have to deal with, and we have to deal with it consolidating the society that should recognize this goal and should provide us the right and the opportunity to implement it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Andrei Alexandrovich. I believe that, uh, well, you talked about comments. Uh, I believe that I, uh, I made just some, I made some notes for myself, and uh, it seems to me that you paid attention to the main thing, that uh, neither the Constitution nor constitutionalism are possible without a certain state of the society. It's impossible to do this work without solidarity, without unity, without a real, a real society contract. Because Constitution is a formal society contract, but we must have a real soil, a real, uh, real uh, platform, otherwise the uh, Constitution becomes uh, uh, just fiction, what we unfortunately witness uh, in uh, different countries of the world. And now, if I may, I would like to ask uh, uh, quite uh, um, a uh, distinguished uh, chairman uh, of uh, uh, from another chamber of our parliament, uh, chairman of the Constitutional Legislation Committee of the State Duma, Vladimir Pligin, distinguished uh, uh, Chief Justice Zorkin, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, is it good to live when there are no changes? When there are no changes, life is good. At the same time, I want to say that uh, the curse of our 20th century is the fact that we lived uh, in the time of changes and the changes never stop. And when we're talking about unity of the society, unity of the society is supported by the ideas, by the depth of ideas and depth of discussion. And if this depth of discussion is lost, it leads towards a huge number of tragedies. Our primitivization could be different. In 1906, and uh, uh, just recently, I addressed the students and told them about it. Uh, uh, there was a transcript of the meeting of the First State Duma, and also programs of all political parties uh, were uh, published at that time. The simple ideas, simple ideas uh, are such that uh, the main goal of the political uh, programs uh, is uh, to get rid of the uh, czarist power. And uh, the tragedy of intellectuals was such that uh, Many years after that, a lot of them wrote about the fact that they uh, looked at a very simple solution. They thought that the Tsars, uh, uh, the Tsar would left and it would bring uh, happiness, but uh, they lost the Tsar. But there was a huge uh, crowd from Moscow railway station to the Winter Palace. But the crowd didn't want to welcome revolutionaries. That crowd wanted to steal wine from the hermitage. And a lot was uh, needed. Uh, and I'm talking about the ideas of constitutionalism. And we have to deal with this subject. Why? Because all these categories dots turned out to be quite stable in the second part of the 20th century, starting maybe from 70s till 90s. All these c categories are no longer in existence. And each category should be reviewed 
from time to time, including such fundamental categories like human rights. Speaking in other audience, in other rooms, uh, Mr. Zorkin presented quite a philosophical uh, lecture, and I just referred to M Mr. Likwaniu, who said that after 50 to 70 years, the previous history has become forgotten and new generation come and they start making new mistakes which sometimes result in a global war. That is why I would like to say that such a great category or value which was developed in, in the constitutional system, uh, this is uh, the human rights, is uh, living gradually and sometimes it's very hard to talk about it if uh, you are not developing uh, the fleet in order to save the those running from their country trying to uh, come across the ocean. So I just limit my intervention a little bit, but today we heard another category mentioned, and I would like to dwell on that. Why? Uh, because from different aspects of view, that would be a very important category in uh, this uh, century. Uh, either it brings a strategy or maybe it will help us uh, to solve uh, the challenges. This is category which uh, is called globalization. First time on uh, the conference on globalization was held in uh, 2007 in Moscow, uh, but uh, it's strange. But uh, those definitions that we used at that time, they are still relevant. Globalization is a phenomenon which organizes differently the way society uh, societies are living and globalization would replace the existing uh, world order and maybe suggest uh, the more uh, perfect uh, modes of living. I would like to say the following. Modern states are sometimes as uh, s sacrificed animals of the globalization. I'm not talking about the uh, demise of the states. I'm talking about the replacement of the states. Uh, in a simple manner, globalization could be determined as the relationship of all relations of the human being, when uh, one part of the world cannot live without uh, interacting with other parts. And sometimes globalization is considered as a threat, and indeed that would have been a threat uh, if you have agreed uh, to the uh, idea that a common or joint uh, monopolistic center of the managing the world uh, have been created. But I don't believe uh, this idea is uh, manageable. Mr. Sapchak said if you invented something new, then you just don't have, uh, you didn't read a lot. And also, many academicians uh, said that progress is not in uh, going in the same direction. In this regard, the world would have ceased to exist, but progress is that to cover all the field of the historic activities of the human uh, being for all the centuries. Globalization shouldn't be the concentration of uh, the powers. I would like to apologize before the interpreters for speaking so fast. And the globalization here, and that would be the focus for the scientific uh, development. In the framework of globalization, we witness many phenomena. And the first phenomenon uh, is the migration. Migration, so up to the Different figures are stated in 
300 uh, million uh, migrants are uh, living in uh, the territory of other countries uh, annually. These 300 million uh, people, they uh, used to be a driving force in their countries, and after Internet and Skype, they started to come back to their countries on a, a less frequent basis. They are trying to form other communities and exert different uh, influence on the state. Taking into account the uh, just time that we left, I would like to say only that state become quite flexible. What it does mean? So states uh, stop uh, to control their population. Uh, there are just few states uh, which control their population. Sometimes it's very difficult to control their own economies. And in a number of countries, the whole process of the circulation of population is uh, hindered uh, by the fact uh, that there is a brain uh, wash of the population and this process could be very dangerous uh, for the countries, especially for the countries who are trying to attract the uh, elite of the society from, uh, from other countries. And that would lead to a marginalization of the countries, of the rogue states, who become the roots of the uh, terrorism. So we can uh, talk about this uh, for ages, and we need to recognize the values of the national states, values of the sovereignty of these states. And Mr. Zorkis talked about this, that when we talk about the value of sovereignty, uh, and Mr. Kutafin also mentioned about this uh, sovereignty of uh, value of sovereignty could be judged uh, from two aspects. First, recognition of the sovereignty from a point of view of the sovereignty of the states uh, on the basis of international law. If it's so, that it would be easier, but sovereignty sometimes is going through transformation or is subject to challenges uh, like uh, challenges of time, or limited statehood. We understand perfectly well what sovereignty means. It could mean different things, like the question uh, of uh, powers concentrated in one hands. If you look at the map, then we will see that, unfortunately, we are dealing with a limited uh, national sovereignty, which is reflected in uh, territorial limits. When a part of a country is uh, beyond uh, the control of the central powers, I don't believe that it won't be an offense if I mention here in this regard a very civilized country which addresses a lot of uh, problems, uh, that, that is the Pakistani state. But if you look at the events uh, taking place there, you can understand what I mean, the limited statehood. And there are some sectoral political uh, limitations or constraints. Uh, there are problems uh, with sovereignty related to, to the fact that some portion of population are going outside the sovereignty and they try to form new forms of morale or uh, new forms uh, governing uh, this uh, sovereignty. I look at you, and I remember your uh, brilliant uh, lecture on constitutional values, which uh, was uh, presented in our state uh, Duma. Dear colleagues, understanding and realizing that we will have uh, to come back to the lecture of Mr. Zorkin, why? Because yesterday it was mentioned in this lecture uh, the quotation of uh, Dostoevsky, 
and we th need to think about this. Maybe we need to go away from uh, idealism. So we face a very difficult uh, task or challenge, which is the world in the final analysis is managed by ideas, and managed uh, by law, and law is the product of uh, uh, human being. Our human brain, and this product is uh, shared by all us, and it was a continu continuation that it was required uh, by the states. And these ideas are also the uh, call for new, I uh, new ideas, new ideas. So we need to avoid uh, both situations, going deep into the absolute idealism or absolute practicism. But uh, we, I believe, uh, we need to ensure balance here, uh, especially in the beginning of the, this uh, century. I mean, approaching uh, the uh, one uh, hundredth anniversary of uh, 1917 uh, events that would uh, should be always recalled by us in order to maintain our ideas to, to create stable state in uh, the unstable world thank you thank you very much but I must admit I didn't make any orders, uh, neither to senators on my right and to the members of the parliament on my left. In my opinion, that would be a blunder to do so, because the Constitutional Court exists on a clearly defined basis. In the framework of our relationship, I would I would uh, like to avoid to refer to the need that we need to observe the lunch time in the state doom. This phenomenon is uh, quite lengthy in time, and where each time I call to my uh, colleagues, all the time they are on lunch, left on lunch. So. Can I continue in the same manner? So now we are coming to such a notion as life is good, especially during the lunch. Yesterday I talked with my friend over the phone. I heard this uh, lecture uh, about uh, sovereignty. I come, came back and uh, said to my wife, I heard uh, wonderful words about uh, sovereignty, but my wife said, I don't know what we, what you mean by uh, sovereignty, but what I'm pretty much sure is that we don't have anything to eat for a dinner. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, we just, I believe, covered all the presentations, and during the time that we left, Maybe we could organize a sort of uh, curing day, maybe at the expense of the forthcoming lunch. Any volunteers? So, first come, first serve. Mr. Vyatkin, uh, Deputy Head of the Committee on the Constitutional Legislation of the State Duma. Is it working? Yes, it is. Just briefly, I would like to continue the way or stream of thoughts of many colleagues who spoke before me and who identify the modern challenges which abandoned by the states or which inevitably would lead to the change of the processes and understanding of the modern constitution constitutionalism, and it closely relates uh, to the sovereignty, its uh, limitations and uh, possibility, and even sometimes they need to do so. It's quite clear that those changes observed in the world at large are triggered by the economic transformations. Maybe I would mention three of them, the exhaustion of uh, natural resources and the deficit of these resources, 
secondly, the, the modern system is not capable to ensure an, uh, con stable growth and consumption. And uh, thirdly, the inadequacy between the uh, liabilities and assets. In any case, using the uh, old terms, this is a super basis notion. When we had to increase uh, production or additional production, we always uh, used such notions like equality between men and women and other uh, new novelties of the social and economic the development and growth, which ensured the participation of all citizens in mass industrial production. Uh, and it's quite clear in order to ensure the economic growth today, we have uh, to transform the system not only of the production but rather of consumption to make it more universal and to change a value, some values which sometimes are not relevant any longer. And it's quite evident that uh, these changes or transformation or evolution of values, this uh, segregation and mixture of uh, traditional societies and unification of uh, individual regardless of his uh, interest should ensure the unif unification of consumption so that the mass global producers are not uh, targeting the specific uh, consumers, but rather they would be free to produce uh, uh, global uh, uniform products which ensure the uniform uh, consumption. Now, we face the second challenge, the points of the global tension, including military conflicts or armed conflicts, and many mentioned about this, which result in the change of the political map of the world, political, economic maps, and we have to admit whether we are able to cope with this spread of the points of uh, conflict, which are present not in one or two parts of the world, but they cover practically all many regions of the world, which calls in question the development of the political or legal uh, systems or implementation of uh, new approaches in terms of the national doctrines, a national uh, build-up, any development, social development on the basis of uh, any idea could be uh, undermined by the spread of the armed conflict or could be a victim of these conflicts. And just briefly, two more aspects. resolution of these challenges uh, through global development, concentration of these hotspots in one place and uh, going away from the regulation functions of the state and uh, delegation of this uh, function uh, to the non-governmental structures or groups. We see now that the whole number of uh, executive uh, powers are delegated to the non-governmental structures and uh, the revenues is, are not the main uh, objectives, rather the, the main objective is just to ensure the redistribution of uh, benefits uh, in favor of uh, one or another uh, group or society. And another way out or possible way out which tells on the development of the constitutional principles and maybe uh, would be implemented in the text of the constitutional acts including uh, the domestic laws this is the regional cooperation through intergovernmental uh, agreements and through 
or by delegation uh, national functions to the supranational associations or organizations. Example of such uh, cooperation already exists with the different levels of uh, in interaction, European Union in first place, Eurasian Economic Union, and other forms of uh, regional and interregional cooperation, which in the first place are based on the economic interest and economic cooperation, but still we should admit that the delegation of the even fun economic uh, t taxation uh, financial functions would require changes into the national uh, national constitution and even domestic legislation. I don't believe that we need to be afraid of that because those principles uh, or those challenges that I mentioned could be addressed uh, through the uh, combination of interest of uh, states which would be grouped in a number of the civilized societies uh, dating back to hundreds of years. And they exist, and no one can uh, uh, reject this idea. And another humane way out, which would be acceptable for the planet, for our uh, humanity instead of uh, concentration of powers in one hand uncontrolled uh, in, in, in uh, tra transparent thank you uh, who will be next uh, mr alexandrov deputy chair of the committee of the council of federation on the constitutional legislation microphone. Five years ago, when we established legal uh, forum in St. Petersburg, we were convinced in the fact that the main for uh, principle of this forum would be principle of the supremacy rule of law, justice, uh, equality, and so on and so forth. That was the principle which prompted us to establish this forum, and our uh, slogan was uh, uh, Law would save the world. But in order to implement this uh, slogan, it turned out that somebody, uh, we need to find somebody who uh, saved the law. That would be lawyers, because instead of uh, legal ideology, we have illegal ideology. The uh, unipolar world, ideology of a single power, superpower, ideology of uh, double standards, and so the ideal ideology which lacks law or justice. And we see uh, when now when we see that one democratic state with a democratic constitution, with a well-established democratic history, is organizing in another European state, anti-governmental coup d'etat, which resulted in many deaths of uh, human beings. So I'm deeply convinced that we need to turn to the uh, international legal community to save the law and after that we would hope that uh, the law would save the world thank you Mr. Bonder said that if it is necessary to sit, then I can, he can make a presentation. Dear colleagues, I will listen with a great interest 
to all the presentations. So we have a huge mosaic of all uh, the prospects of the development of the constitutional systems. It's a wide range of issues uh, uh, from different aspects of the activities of the uh, humanity. So this is a very difficult problem so that it would be left uh, at the expense of the lawyers only. the discretion of the lawyers. In my understanding, the constitutional systems are based on uh, three sacrilege pillars, powers, property, and freedom. And each time we talk about this in, uh, from many angles or from many aspects, all this is related to the collision unity, so to say, maybe a contradictive development of the development of, or evolution of this uh, phenomenon. For a modern constitutionalism, which lives not in only in the world of the global changes and transformation, but also is going through the global crisis of the constitutionalism and maybe Vladimir uh, Nikolaevich talked about this, I mean, the global crisis of the constitutionalism. So, I believe it's necessary for us as a constitutional system experts, since it should be a legal elite, we don't have civil law experts here, so it's necessary to look into the methodological problems among them, relationship between uh, the state and ownership, uh, property rights, and so on. It was mentioned here about the economic need of economic reforms. One of the uh, politicians said global uh, economic reforms uh, start when money is uh, no longer in the pocket. Money is no longer in the pocket, and maybe it's the case. Sometimes it could be the case, but two days ago, the interview of uh, Mr. Graf for foreign mass media, the former Minister of Economic Development and one of the presidents of the leading Russian bank, he said the following quotation. Before we start reforming something, we need to set up the efficient system of uh, governance. So the uh, main prerequisite of the economic reforms is the uh, political reforms, so on. So this is a very difficult, challenging, methodological issue between the relationship of uh, the state and uh, the ownership. Not only because state is uh, gobbling down ownership or it uh, uh, goes uh, above this, but maybe in the... Uh, in the movement, uh, well, it could be a uh, one-way, two-way, who is following whom, or parallel fashion, but still, it must be evolving, and of course, uh, uh, so a very special, universal way of not just protection, but also development of constitutionalism is the constitutional justice and uh, that premise on stability and uh, dynamic uh, approach it could be uh, said uh, in uh, the format of constitutional paradox uh, the condition of stability is the dynamic approach of constitutionalism the condition of stability is dynamic approach and uh, stability and uh, dynamic approach uh, should uh, should be viewed uh, formally from the legal point of view and also social cultural and uh, constitutional justice is uh, 
reviving and providing uh, a dynamic incentive that provides for stability. And in this respect, it's highly important to look at constitutionalism. Uh, we are quite right about social, cultural, uh, institutional beginnings, but we have to talk about constitutionalism as uh, a moral and ethical category, not abstractly, but specifically also uh, through the tools of constitutional justice. Uh, when I came here, I received uh, some uh, data on uh, the significance of uh, fairness and justice in constitutional justice. I don't have time. I'm going to talk about just some of those. 84% uh, of all the rulings of the Constitutional Court of Russia in uh, 2014 uh, and 2015 uh, contain the category of fairness, not abstract, but uh, it could be fair equality, it could be non-fair, unfair equality, or the problem of fair inequality. And I could provide very specific examples regarding this. Uh, uh, well, you told me, s uh, well, right now, I uh, could start with that, but I want to say that uh, what I said was not a very systemic approach, but we have lots of problems that we didn't have a chance to discuss. That's why I would like to ask our facilitator uh, to uh, view this platform of constitutionalism as the constant in the legal forum. Uh, because, uh, well, uh, we must have this public law approach also. Uh, well, as it was said long ago, uh, the person is moved by motives. Uh, Nikolai suggested to continue this constitutional discussion because he understands that we are uh, in uh, the fair and equal society. Because of that, uh, next time uh, he is going to be the speaker, number one, in order not to make a short speech. So that's fair approach. Yes, it's the fair intent. Regarding, regarding constitutionalism, yes, of course, this is a multi-aspect uh, issue. And I would like to say that we must remember that experts paid attention to the fact that constitution is there and constitutionalism is there. Sometimes they don't coincide and that's when trouble starts. Uh, but many countries, uh, they move differently and uh, I shouldn't I tell you that there is no formal constitution in Britain, but in Britain they have real constitutionalism and uh, some other examples. But constitutionalism is understood differently. In uh, the People's Republic of China, they don't talk about rule of law and about human rights. But then when they ask, what is constitutionalism for you, the main premise that constitutionality, constitutionality must be kept. Constitution is above all, but time is flying. And suddenly I read with great amazement that uh, at some major event in China, 
Well, they said that China uh, had to uh, move closely to understanding constitutionalism on the planet. But we understand what is this great dragon all about, and the movement of this dragon could be understood differently. And uh, we, from this point of view, our task is uh, to establish constitutionalism. But this is the root of all problems. And when some people say, let's uh, define constitutionalism, then we would be able to move. At the plenary meeting, uh, they uh, remembered St. Augustine regarding uh, the government, uh, the law, and the gang. I would like to give another example from St. Augustine, who said that when I am asked about time, I cannot answer. It's something divine. I don't feel it. I don't understand it. He was older than 70. He said, I, I just understand. I used to have a very long black beard and lots of hair, but now I am bold and sick. That's what I do understand about time. At the same time, we uh, what uh, time makes with us. And I believe that uh, judging by the presentations, uh, uh, I believe it seemed to me that constitutionalism was the real uh, acting system of institutions uh, and provisions that uh, when implemented in the country, in the societies, providing for a real uh, a real uh, rule of constitution with the absolute imperative, uh, if we quote Immanuel Kant. And of course, there are some unconditional imperatives in other countries that could be different, but uh, we are going to talk about the word of law as the measure of freedom, which is reflected in the principle of everybody's equality uh, in court. And uh, if there is, it's not available, there is no rule of law otherwise. And in this case, we wouldn't have good lunch. Now, bon appétit, our session is over.